Yes people, what's going on? The season's just started and it's already begun. Manchester United have lost against Brighton at the Amex Stadium, the second Premier League game of the season and I am still absolutely baffled at how we've managed to lose that. Especially when you think about that Garnacho goal, well, that would have, could have, should have been and should have put Manchester United 2-1 up. Joshua Xerxes was still sliding in from the previous, from, from the pass from Bruno Fernandes when the ball came back across and hit him as it went in. Every Manchester United player celebrated. I celebrated. Joshua Xerxes didn't celebrate because deep down he knew that that goal was about to get disallowed for offside. And it felt like once that happened to Manchester United, the goal from Brighton was inevitable. And they, I feel two ways about the game. I feel gutted, disappointed frustrated, a little bit angry that we've lost that game and um, especially from you know getting back level at 1-1 there was a few moments where we could have done better that, uh, that we could have done better with obviously that goal that should have um, stood if Joshua Zerksy could have just pulled his body out of the way it was difficult for him having slid in um, and I feel like that but then there were also times the first 30 minutes of the game I thought Manchester United played really well we were pressing well Mason Mount came off at half time for Joshua Xerxes because we had fell behind and we needed that presence um, in the box. Um, unfortunately, we wish that presence wasn't there when, when Gardacho put the ball in the back of the net, but um, we needed that presence in the box and I thought Mason Mount was unlucky to come off because I thought he was one of our better players. Um, we seemed to be pressing really well, winning the ball back really well. We had a few opportunities um, and you know we, we looked like a team that was in control. Uh, me and Scolzi had spoken about control for Manchester United the other day. Um, and I agreed with a lot with a lot of what he was saying in terms of the control. I still believe the performance against Fulham was an improvement and it was a much better performance. And um, I thought there were glimpses of that again today. Um, now there's times where we do need that control in midfield and we do need that figure to come in and kind of take control of the games. There's a moment where you can still tell Kabi Maynard, I love Kabi Maynard. Again, first half today, phenomenal. Got tired as the game went on a little bit. Started making a few mistakes. There was one moment where he loses the ball and he goes to chase it. He goes to press the centre-back and press the goalkeeper. Brighton played the ball out and now we haven't got him in midfield. You know, Scott McTominay was trying to get back. We had all these players trying to get back. But Kobe Melo was then out of position. And at that time in the game, we needed a little bit more control on it. Um, now, Kobe Melo was fantastic and I thought he was very good in the main again today. Um, you know, some of the touches, some of the flicks, some of the passing, um, some of his ability to beat the press, his turns, he plays with wind mirrors on. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Again, I thought Casemiro had a decent game. It was a strange substitution to bring Bruno off, in my opinion, um, as well. I, I agreed with the Marcus Rashford substitution. I thought he ran a lot in this game. There was a lot of times where his runs weren't being found. He was unlucky with a goal that was disallowed for offside. Again, as he took a shot and then got the deflection in, with what looked like a little, you know, um, a, a little back flick like kind of kind of goal um, that was disallowed for offside as well. And I don't think Rashford was was terrible today. Obviously, you expect him to do better, and he deserved to come off because Ahmad had just got the goal. And before Ahmad had got the goal, I thought, you know what, Ahmad would have been. He, he could have took Ahmad off at half time. Um, I thought maybe we needed to bring in Joshua Xerxes, um, and I thought Ahmad would maybe be the one sacrificed. In the end, it was Mason Mount, but Ahmad gets the goal. Um, and then as soon as that happens, it had to be Marcus Rashford to come off because obviously Ahmad had that momentum. But then again, you could tell he was tired towards the end of the game. A few under hit passes, a few over hit passes, um, players in, playing us into trouble at times. He's usually very good with the ball at his feet and those, you know, manoeuvring out of tight spaces and stuff. And I thought he gave the ball away towards the back end of the game a little bit, especially when we have moments where, you know, we could have attacked. And there was one moment in the first half as well where his pass should have been better. And it was behind Marcus Rashford when we had a three on two. Um, so there were times today where you look at it, but look, all in all, you got to kind of pay massive respects to him for even playing in this game. Um, and he deserves the goal, especially after losing his stepmom um, in the last 24 hours, I believe. Posted about it on social media yesterday. So it was even a surprise that he played the game. But in terms of just the football, you could tell, you know, there was a few moments where he's still a little bit raw. And also that may have been playing on his mind as well but got a goal, um, had a little bit of luck with the deflection, but I think it was on target anyway. Then we have that other goal, that's, I say goal, 
because it's not stood. Oh, disappointing, man. Welbeck opened the score, and it was always going to be Danny Welbeck. When I saw he was on 99, uh, I think his league goals, it was, it was always obvious that Danny Welbeck was going to go and score his 100th against Manchester United, and it was kind of um, symbolic in a way, and it, a guy that grew up in Manchester came through the academy at Manchester United, scored a lot of those goals for Manchester United, and then scores the, what proved to be a decisive goal in the game as well. As much as I'd like to be happy for Danny Welbeck, um, I was absolutely gutted. Because again, that came at a time where I thought Manchester United were playing well. We had a stranglehold in the game, we had control of the game in the first half. Second half, I thought Brighton started the better and then we got the goal against the run of play a little bit. Um, but once the goal went in, we should have been winning that game. And again, you look back at that moment where Xerxes, uh, you can't blame him, man. He's just sliding in from the, from the cross from Bruno Fernandes previously. I don't even think Bruno Fernandes is looking for him. I think Bruno knows he's looking for Garnacho. Now, you might say, all right, United score that. We end up 2-2, but still... I think we win the game if that goes in and it's a bit of a frustrating one, man. Oh, man. Disappointing to lose so early in the season as well. we got Liverpool next up at Old Trafford. Beat them, you get six points out of nine. Things start to look a little bit better, especially when you consider Brighton is a tricky place to go, but you don't want to lose early in the season and we've managed to lose there. Um, I can't remember the first, last time we won two games in a row at the start of the season. It's pretty... <laughs> pretty poor we need to follow it up with a performance against Liverpool though because what you don't want is silly talk going on about the manager and all this if we don't get a performance though it was a good performance um, in part against Fulham we got the result in the end Joshua Xerxes is sticking his foot out to win it for us and today he might have cost us well he's cost us at least a point and I think he's cost us maybe three points as well which look you can't you can't blame him but oh, massively unlucky Man United massively unlucky to not go ahead there um, there were times today though where we got to look at and you know we're talking about Manuel Ugart coming in I think there's a massive hole there we've got to try and figure out how we get the best out of utilising Mason Mount's pressing ability keep him in the team because when we play Bruno and Mason Mount we miss out on a presence in the box so we need to kind of figure out what's going on there I wouldn't have minded seeing this kind of play Mason Mount on the right at some point maybe I don't rate Anthony there's a point as well we're 2-1 down at the end of the game he just fouls one of them for not, what's the point in that? What's the point in that? What's the point in Anthony? We should just get rid, to be totally honest with you. Harry Maguire probably at fault for their first goal as well. Although we had a chance to clear it after that. Um, I thought the first cross, he should have been clearing that. He didn't kind of deal with it. And then it comes back in and Welbeck scores. And we had a good performance against Fulham. I think now you'll probably see Matis De Ligt come in and start. And Matis De Ligt, when, when the Jao Pedro goal went in, he was looking around like, what's going on here? He would have been shocked at defending for that goal because he's left on the back post on his own. Scott McTominay was in and around the area. You've got to get on that. You've got to get on that. You've got to pick him up. As soon as you see he's free, you've got to pick him up. Maybe we're wondering where's our left back. All right, cool. Deal with that later. Go and you it in the vicinity. You've got to go and deal with that. Um, but again, it was poor from not, not Scott McTominay on his own, but poor defensive work that we've left so many people um, over there on the back stick makes no sense that sinking feeling again two games into the season let us know your thoughts in the comments below keep it like, like comment, share, subscribe I've been Alan McCola I'm out of here